I'm Joanne Banco, author and online educator at letsgoso.com. Today I have a really fun project for you. It's a cozy, cuddly cape. And you can see it's made from a very special textured fabric. I'm a big fan of wraps and shawls and capes. And I'm gonna um, introduce you possibly to a new fabric today and tell you a lot about this and how to sew it, how to cut it. So let's go ahead and talk first about pattern selection. When you are gonna be working with a fabric like this, you can already see it's very fuzzy, very furry, very textured. And at first glance, you might think, ooh, I don't know about that super easy to sew, and I'm gonna give you all the tricks and all the tips so that you can be very, very successful. So pattern, we're talking pattern first of all. You do wanna look for something with minimal seams. And you can see um, from looking at mine, I eliminated the pockets. I used a very simple tab closure, and I selected a little bit of a shorter version of the cape because the fabric itself does have a little bit of weight and a little bit of bulk, and you wanna go on the shorter side for that. So that's your first thing you're gonna look for. Lots of cape patterns out there. Try to find one with minimal seams, and um, you're gonna be already ahead of the game. When we talk about cutting it, let's go back to talking about, about seams. We're gonna have a back piece and a front piece. And your back piece, in all likelihood, is going to have a, a center back seam. That's where you would be turning the cape right side out. Makes it very easy once you've sewn the two layers together. But when I'm dealing with a fabric like this that has, again, bulk and texture, I want to be able to cut the back piece without a back seam. So if you take a look at my back pattern piece here, I have drawn in uh, 5 eighths of an inch in from that cut line, and I have now created a fold line. So when I cut out the back cape piece from my fashion fabric, I'm going to lay it on the fold. When I cut the back pieces, it'll be two pieces, from my lining fabric, I'm going to cut it with the standard 5 eighths inch seam allowance and sew that. Okay, so we're good to go on that. Now, if I had room, I would spread out the whole thing and show it to you, but I don't have room to do that. So let's just zero in over on this for a minute. And I will tell you that normally you're gonna cut fabric double layer, but I'm gonna recommend that you cut it single layer. So you're gonna cut one, one front single layer and then flip it, cut the second front single layer as well. You're just gonna have an easier time with that. With your lining, you can go ahead and cut just like you would normally. All right, take a look at the um, three fabrics that I have here because this is just a little different color variation. And because this is very unique fabric, it's not something you find in a ton of different colors, but you may find a faux suede to coordinate with it. So definitely look for that. Look for something that would um, mix and match with it. And then a lining, and you're gonna wanna find a lining that is 60 inches wide. So this fabric actually coordinates with that, um, with that lining. It all comes to, uh, together from the same manufacturer so that it all works together. So your suede's gonna be your, your trim. Okay, so we're good to go as far as cutting, except for one thing that I'm gonna tell you that is really important. You are wanting to be prepared to make a mess because as lovely as this is, it is gonna, the fur is gonna fly. The very first time you cut those edges, you're going to have a lot of shedding. That's the bad news. The good news is it only sheds once. So here's my big tip for you. As you cut each piece, take a big plastic bag, take your piece, put it in the plastic bag, and when you're all done cutting, go down wherever your laundry area is and put everything in of the, um, the, the textured fabric in the dryer on air setting. Make absolutely positively sure you do not use any heat because if you use heat on this fabric, you will essentially melt the texture as far as um, 
it being uh, showing, it'll it'll flatten out. It won't hurt the fabric, but it'll actually flatten out. This actually has roses that are um, you know worked into the fabric, so you want to maintain that. Take it to the dryer. I put mine on for an entire hour. Went upstairs, vacuumed the room. When I came back, um, I was good to go. Again, trust me, it's only going to shed once, and once it it um, lets off all that lint, you're going to be fine for for sewing. All right, so we are um, going to just take a, a look at the um, garment on the dress form for just a second here, so that I can peel back and just show you that that lovely lining and then that um, suede trim. You can see that I used one single tab. The pattern actually has two tabs on it. And at first glance, I thought one would be enough. I'm going to tell you that as with all sewing, don't ever be afraid to um, you know, change things as you go along. This tab has buttonholes on it. One more little trick for you here. Obviously, we need to be able to open this up. So this buttonhole opens, but this one will never be open and closed. I don't need to open both sides of the cape. So I went ahead and stitched the buttonhole there, but I sewed the button right through it. So that's all anchored in place. Would you like to see me sew those tabs? Let's move on over to the machine. I'll show you that first. We are now ready to sew the tabs. So for the interfacing, I went ahead and made a second piece. I cut away all the seam allowance. I cut that interfacing piece so it would be the exact size that I needed without seam allowance. There's a method to my madness. Let me show you why I did that. I'm going to put the two layers together. I have my machine set up for regular straight stitching. I did change my stitch length to slightly shorter, so I'm down to two and I'm going to um, use a special foot with this. I'm using a foot that has um, a belt drive to it. So it's a little bit like a walking foot, only it's a souped up walking foot. And it gives you great control on slippery surfaces or um, varying fabric textures. So watch what I'm doing here. I'm literally sewing around that interfacing I've got this machine set though that's going to pivot and I'm going to sew right along that edge. When I get to the point, I actually trimmed my interfacing piece just a teeny bit. I nipped off that little point so that when I go to sew around that, I'm going to sew two stitches before I pivot again, go around. The outer corner, I don't need to do that same thing because the outer corner isn't as sharp. Pivot around. I'm a little off on this one, but you'll see in a minute I've been better on the next one. And I would do the same thing around that corner. So let me take this out of the machine. And let me show you one that I have finished that I've stitched with dark thread. Of course, you're going to use matching thread. But you could see how I've pivoted around that corner. And at the points, I took two stitches across the point. When you turn a point right side out, in order to have it pointy, you need it a little rounded. It's a weird thing. Don't ask me why it turns out that way, but it's absolutely positively true. So I've also left a little opening, and then I would turn that right side out. My tab is finished. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. How about some of the other um, techniques that we're going to have with this particular fabric? Well, we can't fuse interfacing to this. In fact, my other big tip of the day is to caution you, you can't press on this fabric either. You will basically destroy the texture. You can hover a little bit with steam and then manipulate it with your fingers. That's all I did on my cape and it hangs beautifully. Lining you can press normally. So we can't use interfacing like we normally would. So instead, I've used something that is actually called a stay tape. It's very thin, very lightweight, and it has no stretch to it. So I have cut that to fit. I just made a little mock, tiny little neckline here for you so that I can show you that would be the area that would stretch out of shape because it's cut on the curve. So we're going to do just a little bit of stitching here with the stay tape on the fashion fabric. So I'm going to go back to the machine. I'm going to get that right underneath the presser foot. I'm going to stitch a, a little scant distance from the seam allowance, but I'm going to change my stitch. 
to a triple zigzag. I'm gonna narrow it just a little bit. And again, with this specialty foot, it only allows for you to use certain stitches. But the stitches that are allowable that I can select are all um, highlighted. The ones that I should stay away from are gray, so I can't even choose the wrong stitch. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna zigzag around this, lengthen that a little bit if I need to. And I would just walk that around. And literally what I'm doing is I'm locking that curve in place so it doesn't stretch out. Essentially what interfacing does for you is stabilizes that edge area or facing area, wherever you're sewing it in. So by using this stay tape, I'm doing the exact same thing. So we'll only sew that halfway so you can see the idea. Now, you can see those white stitches there kind of ziggy zaggy along. That is very, very snug and very tight. So that, we'd go all the way around the neckline. That's the only area we need to be concerned with that. So how about sewing regular seams? That's where this foot's gonna help again. So I'm going to put these two layers together and whenever I have the opportunity, I'm going to sew with the lining facing up. I am gonna now choose again a regular straight stitch and this time I'm gonna lengthen it just a little bit. 3.5 is good. Okay, and you can see that is just as smooth as can be. Now, if you don't have a foot like this, consider using a walking foot. If you need to, you might just use extra pins or you might even choose to hand baste. It's easy to make a beautiful, wonderful, warm cape with this great textured fabric and beautiful silky lining. Be sure to visit the website. We've got complete instructions for you with lots of more tips and techniques.